How's it going, ladies and brothers? I'm Bobby Six Killer, and welcome back to Quantum Suicide. Um, I'm surprised we've actually gotten this far. We're up to the third deletion game. I don't know whether the game's programmed uh, for you to not fail really early on, or whether I'm just that good. But uh, we made it pretty far. Um, so we're still working our way towards our first ending. Sorry if I look tired, but I am exhausted. <laughs> but I want to play more Quantum Suicide, so... I got strong coffee right here next to me, so let's get into it. Come on. Beatrix let out a frustrated cry she wrenched her arm free of Nicholas's grasp. We could end this here. We're about to do another deletion game. We could die right now. Now isn't the time for this. We need to prepare for the first round or we'll be putting ourselves at a serious disadvantage. Let's head to the rec room and work out our strategy. We have none. That sounds like a good plan. I don't even know what we're doing. Yoshiki grabbed my hand and pulled me out of the dining hall towards the rec room. Thank God he likes me. I don't know why. Why are you being so quiet? I just sentenced someone to death today. Someone was going to die anyway, right? So it isn't your fault. I robbed them of three days. Thinking about it like that will just drive you crazy. For now, let's just try and focus on winning as a team. Yoshiki flashed me a winning smile. As awful as I felt, I appreciated that he was making an effort to cheer me up. Mastering what little enthusiasm I could, I managed a weak smile. Like, okay, let's win this thing. Ooh, fancy. We arrived at the rec room and Nicholas immediately started discussing our strategy. I've been considering two particular strategies. Let's hear them. Our first option is to go through the rounds with two people on zero each time in order to spread the points over the other two. In doing so, we'd increase their personal pools and hopefully win the rounds, assuming the other team decides to spread their points over all four people. And our other option? Assume they're doing what I just described and spread out our points over all four of us. How'd we go about spreading our points? We'd have to play it by ear, until we saw the results of the first round. That makes sense. No point nailing down a plan when there are so many variables in play. Dai suddenly chimed in over the intercom system. Please assemble in the dining hall for this week's deletion game. Round one starts in five minutes. Woo! Woo! That certainly didn't feel like an hour. It wasn't. It appears she's only given us half an hour. What? But that's not fair! Well, she was gonna make us play on the spot. Half an hour is still better than nothing. I guess. Okay, let's make our way over now. For the second time this that morning, we headed to the dining hall, where we'll be forced to play the deletion game once again. We arrived to find Dai lazing around, gazing at her nails disinterestedly. Oh goody, everyone's here. Now I know I said an hour, but... Just look at you all. There's nothing quite like the risk of death to wake you up in a hurry, is there? All right, let's play. Very well, Dai. Let's get this over with. I love your fighting spirit. Okay, so what I will need is for you all to wait outside during the other team's turn. You will get up to five minutes in the room to decide on your points allocation, and after that, you can input your choices on the main terminal. However, all hands will have to be placed on the terminal in agreeance. Team A, you are up first. Team B, get out. The members of Team B hastily left the dining hall and left us alone with Dai in the dining hall. The dining table now projected a shimmering holographic terminal. Your five minutes starts now. Okay, I've put together promising configurations. Please choose whichever one you prefer. Whichever one gives Beatrix the least. <laughs> Let's go with that one. Is everyone in agreement? Yes. Yep. Whatever. I input the allocation using the terminal and everyone else placed their palms on theirs to approve it. Thank you for your entry. Please exit the dining hall so that stinky Team B can assign their points. We quickly shuffled out of the dining hall and Team B entered for their turn. We need to go with luck on this one. We went out, like we do with everyone. We went out into the corridor, Team B passing us as they went and I couldn't look at them. Deep down I was hoping for a result that meant one of them would be killed. I hate this game. I hate all the games. The door opened for us. Team B must have gone in with a clearly defined strategy. They must have barely talked at all before putting in their choice. We went back in and sat down, ready to hear the worst. Why, hello, contestants. I didn't see you there. Dai laughed to herself before continuing. 
Both teams have now inputted their selection, and so it is my pleasure and my privilege to announce the results of round one. And the winner of round one is... Ty! Woo! Crap. Can you feel the tension? Ugh, this is amazing! Let's move on to round two. Team okay. A, you are up again. Please follow me. Ty appeared to walk through the walls and wall as we made our way to the dining hall. We need to even out our Your points. Your five then. minutes starts now. Okay, Ty, that's not too bad for the first round. I'm the only one with any individual points, though. What should we do for this round? We need to distribute some points between the rest of us. Our options are the following. Ah, fine. Let's go with that one. I input the allocation into the terminal and everyone else places their palms on theirs to approve it. Thank you for your entry. Please exit the dining hall so that stinky Team B can assign their points. If you would be so kind as to draw your attention to this screen. I was trying to evenly give out the points. For some reason they had to give massive points for me or for Beatrix and that's it. But I projected a screen using the same light she was made of. And the winner of round two is... are my hero! That's not the points I picked. <laughs> Let's move on to round three then. I don't think it matters what I pick. Team A, you are up again. Please follow me. Glad I'm running out of luck. Di appeared to walk through the wall as we made our way back to the dining hall. Your five minutes starts now! We might be safe! One more round before we can count our chickens, Yoshiki. Heading into the final battle, I suggest. Um, let's go with this one because I've got the most points. Except, Congratulations, uh, it just does whatever. After three rounds, you have come out victorious, and that means Team A, you lose. Congrats! And the lucky winner of the wheel is Yoshiki. All right, well, let's get to it. But first, just let me take the time to really congratulate all of our winners and our losers. Isn't teamwork just the greatest? Did we lose them? Now the fun part. I don't know. Die projected an execution wheel and excitedly spun it. Let's see. What do we have today? Tick, Congratulations, tick, tick. Yoshiki. You have won electrocution. Well, I guess it's a fitting way for me to die. What? How so? Yoshiki's father accidentally electrocuted himself to death. You could say it's something of a family specialty. That's a pretty strange family specialty. Yoshiki laughed half-heartedly at my poor attempt to lighten the mood. <laughs> yeah, my family is pretty strange. All right, I've surveyed the ship and the best place to get electrocuted is the engineering bay. No surprise there. That was definitely the worst deletion game so far. And the most obvious that my input has no effect on how it's playing out. You all know the drill. Let's move it. But okay. <laughs> we started making our way towards the engineering bay. Yoshiki walked between me and the captain, chatting along the way as if it were another day. Kimmy, do you think there's an afterlife? What do you think, Yoshiki? I think there might be. I'm sure there is. And I'm sure your parents are waiting for you. You really think so? Of course I do. I'm just jealous they'll get to have you all to themselves. The captain's eyes started to well up with tears, but she fought them back. Well, don't worry, Kimmy. At this rate, I might see you next week. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yoshiki grinned playfully at the captain. I'll be sure to clean up before you arrive. I can't have you scolding me in the afterlife, too. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, not back here again. At that point, we arrived at the engineering bay, where we found Dai standing in front of a fuse box, looking quite pleased with herself. All right, Yoshiki, if you would step this way, open this box, and, you know, grab onto some of the live wires, that would be awesome. This isn't my first electrocution, Dai. I know how to kill myself. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Sorry for trying to be helpful. I like him all the more now. Well... This appears to be my stop. I'm sorry, BFF. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you, too. 
could you do me a favor while I'm gone? Name it. Would you check in on Kimiko every once in a while? You got it, Yoshiki. She especially likes it if you're late all the time. Oh, I bet she does. I'll try my best. Yoshiki said his goodbyes to everyone before hugging the captain, who began to cry again despite her best efforts. Kimmy, sis, I love you. And I always will. I love you too, Yoshiki. I'm sorry I couldn't save you. I'm so sorry. What did I say about crying? The captain sniffled before putting away, pulling away from the hug to salute Yoshiki. Officer Sasaki, thank you for your contributions to the Everett. You have been relieved of your duties. The girl saluted Yoshiki, who seemed embarrassed by all the attention. Dai cleared her throat and made a wrap it up gesture with her right hand. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a present for you on my bed. What? Yoshiki just smiled as he grabbed onto the exposed wires in the fuse box. His body jolted violently as thousands of volts ran through his body. The hairs on my head tingled as electricity filled the air. Its cacophonous crackle permeated the room, harsh to the ears. I held onto the captain, who looked as if she was moments away from reaching out and grabbing Yoshiki's twisted form. The last thing we needed right now were more unnecessary deaths. After a few moments, Dai cut the power to the fuse box and Yoshiki's burnt and lifeless body slumped to the ground. Job well done, Dai. He's definitely dead. Dai gave herself a small pat on the back. As soon as the electricity stopped, I let go of the captain who was immediately on the ground with Yoshiki, just propping him up in her lap attempting to get any response. Yoshiki? Yoshiki? Nicholas knelt down to check Yoshiki's vitals. vitals. He raised his head to meet the captain's eyes. I'm sorry, Captain. The captain broke down in tears, hugging Yoshiki so tightly that her cries were muffled by his lifeless body. Captain, I- Leave her be. I stepped away from the captain and stood back with the rest of the crew. We all have places to be. Let's get out of here and allow the captain to grieve in peace. Melody nuzzled into Beatrix's neck as she turned on her heels and followed Nicholas out of the engineering bay. It wasn't long before the others followed suit. So I stood for a moment longer, watching as the captain continued to cry into Yoshiki's chest. Unable to bear it any longer, I finally turned and left. Well, that's another one down. I don't know how that worked, but another one's down. Couldn't help but feel guilty about Yoshiki's death. He was my best friend and I'd let him down. I still don't understand when we became best friends. I attempted to sleep, tossing and turning in my bed, but unfortunately, sleep avoided me. I wonder what time it is. I leaned over to the bedside table and grabbed my tablet. It was 4.26am, I was going to say toilet. I reached over and grabbed my toilet. Frustrated, I shut my eyes again, threw my bedpan across the room. Sleep, damn it! I sighed and pulled myself out of bed. I headed to the Eco Lounge, one of Yoshiki's favourite places. Regardless of it being so early in the morning, the Eco Lounge looked as beautiful as it always does. After all, there's no sunrise in space, so nothing had changed. I sat down on the grassy hill and looked out at the stars. Talk to Yoshiki? Yoshiki, I know you probably can't hear me. After all, there's no scientific basis for the persistence of a spirit after death. But let's just let that slide for now. I'm sorry, Yoshiki. I hung my head. The name stuck in my throat. I was the team captain. I should have done more to protect you. It hadn't, it hasn't even been 12 hours and I can feel... I can feel the hole you left in the ship and the crew. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. I just wish I could be as strong and cheerful as you were, even when your friends died. You can be. Just try harder, bestie. Yoshiki? A giggle giggling Nicholas revealed himself from behind a tree. Sorry to disappoint you, but it is only me. That is a fucked up joke. That was low, Nicholas. I saw the opportunity and I just had to take it. Besides, humor is one of the best coping strategies in the face of grief. It's still fucked up. I hope you know that. I'm not laughing. You may not be, but what do you think Yoshiki would have wanted? I thought back to all the time I'd had with Yoshiki. Now cheerful and happy he always was. I didn't think he'd want me to stop laughing either. I forced myself to laugh. Ha 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 ha. Nicholas was bemused by my reaction. Apparently I broke you. Luckily for me, in space they cannot revoke my medical license. <laughs> Lucky for you. Do you even have one? No. Which is probably why I broke you. We both paused for a moment before bursting into laughter. So, what are you doing here? After last night's execution. I asked I to alert me if anyone was not sleeping well. It's very professional of you, Dr. Vogel. I'll let you in on a little secret. 
I leaned in closer to hear a secret. I informed me that it was not only you that got out of bed, it was Shizuka also. But I only checked up on you. Uh, why is that? I would much rather spend time with you. That's funny, because I'd much rather spend time with Shizuka. <laughs> Burn. I cocked my eyebrow. This answer didn't sound 100% honest. Are? Okay, well, Shizuka is also a very difficult patient, and I would rather not deal with her this early in the morning. I looked at Nicholas for a moment before breaking into hysterical laughter. I had no idea you were so fearful of Shizuka. I am not fearful. I simply prefer my social interaction to be as free of awkwardness as possible. We can go play unicorns. You're full of surprises, Nicholas. Nicholas smiled at me, but his eyes betrayed his slight embarrassment. Regardless of my fear of particular persons, how are you feeling? Hungry. I think my stomach is eating itself. Wow, that hungry, eh? Is it unhealthy that after watching my friends be executed, all I can think about is food? Quite the contrary, an appetite is a great sign. Yay, I'm not a sociopath. I would not count that one out just yet. Oh. <laughs> I was stunned with disbelief for a moment. Was I a sociopath? <laughs> I am just playing with you. You do not exhibit any traits that would have me concerned. Unimpressed, I gave Nicholas my best menacing sociopath face. <laughs> you are killing me here. Just before I could retort, my stomach made a huge grumbling noise. Ah, uh, yes. The issue at hand. Hunger. Do you think there'd be any food in the kitchen at this hour? I can do you one better. Nicholas rummaged around in his coat pocket before pulling out what appeared to be a small piece of fabric cloth wrapped in a bundle. Here you go. What is it? Doctor's orders. Nicholas seemed to find great amusement at his attempt at a joke. I took the small bundle from his hand, unwrapping it to find a brownie. A brownie? They happen to be <laughs> Beatrix's favorite, so I ensure that I have them on hand. For emergencies. Emergencies? At the best of times, Beatrix can be testing. Add hungry to the mix and we have a potential catastrophe on our hands. She is a walking catastrophe. Is it okay I eat this then? I don't want to cause an incident. Yes, please. I will have Katashi make me a new batch today. Thank you so much. I gorge myself on the brownie. Again, Katashi demonstrates his magic in the kitchen. Thank you for coming and check up, checking up on me, Nicholas. I really appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Your company is worth the early rise. Are you coming on to me again? <laughs> Even in the face of our dire situation, Nicholas can still turn on the charm. Well, I think I'll head back to my quarters and try and get some more sleep. That is a very good idea. Good night, Nicholas. Good morning. Nicholas would make a great father one day with those lame dad jokes. An embarrassing father, you mean? I made my way back to the to my quarters. As soon as my head hit the pillow, I was out like a light. Speaking with Nicholas was exactly what I needed. Hey, hey! What? I opened my eyes to see Di standing next to my bed. Um, Earth to Jordan? Di stopped in her tracks and began talking to herself. Wait, maybe invoking Earth's name is a bit intensive. Insensitive, sorry. <laughs> Given how the human race destroyed the planet. Might be open wounds. Uh, what are my other options, though? Other planets don't sound right. Mars 2, Jupiter 2. Di? Yes? What's happening? Why are you here? Well, it's nice to see you too. Sheesh. What? Di gave me a scathing look, highly unimpressed by my re by the reception. I've summoned the crew for the next game explanation. They're all in the dining hall. Am I late? Late is an understatement. You didn't even wake up to my previous announcement over the ship's PA system. Oh, I'm so sorry. I haven't been sleeping well. Di turned on her best disingenuous voice. Don't worry, I get it. All well, your friends are dying, and you probably will too soon. Thanks. That's helping. Piece of advice. Shoot. Di leaning closer to me and whispered in my ear. You'll have plenty of time to sleep when you're dead. Until then, dining hall. Now. Di dissipated. I jumped out of bed and ran quickly to the dining hall. I didn't want the crew to be punished for my lateness. Clearly, Di was not impressed. I made it to the dining hall. Very short of breath. Everyone was sitting around the dining hall table, awaiting my arrival. I'm so sorry- Where are your clothes? What? I looked down and saw that the captain was right. I was wearing a singlet in my boxer shorts. <laughs> Monkey, you have to wear your clothes! It's a rule! I know, we talked about this, didn't we, Melody? I I'm so sorry, I just ran. Well, now we all get to see what kind of man you really are. 
One that doesn't get dressed properly? <laughs> Beatrix smirked playfully while nudging Shizuka to her right. Shizuka was sitting with her hands clasped tightly over her eyes. Her cheeks were bright red. I'll just go back and get... I don't think so, mister. Dai appeared in front of me, grinning like a maniac. You're already late. I wouldn't allow you to keep me waiting any longer. I tried to awkwardly cover myself. Don't be ashamed, Rookie. That's quite the impressive body you have there. Um, thank you? Why are you coming on to me as well? <laughs> Katashi smiled playfully as I sheepishly took a seat next to Nicholas. We're all adults here. Let us behave as such. I'm not an adult. I'm five. Yeah. Melody, you are an honorary adult because you are so mature. Melody smiled proudly at Nicholas before turning to the captain for affirmation. He is right. You are an honorary adult now. That makes me feel so much better. What does? I remember you being adamant that Melody couldn't play my games because she was a child, but now, problem solved. You know very well that... Melody, wanna have your first adult drink with Dai? Can I? No. The captain tried to intervene, but Dai spoke straight over the top of her. Can you? Of course, you're an adult now. You don't have to listen to anyone anymore. Melody's face lit up. Even you? Dai was taken aback momentarily by the response, before nonchalantly addressing the rest of the crew. Haha, <laughs> kids say the dumbest things, eh? Dai turned her attention back to Melody, who was sitting, waiting an answer. You don't have to do what I say, ever. You're free to make your own choices. Really? Yep, and I'm free to murder you when you disobey me. But... that's not fair! That's life, kiddo. You're free to choose everything but the consequences. Melody sat quietly, pouting in her chair. Excellent. Now that I've dished out some life lessons, it's time to get to the fun part. <laughs> Vampire children is played over three cycles. Your voice came back. One person will be chosen at random by me and be made the vampire. I'll tell this person in secret, and the six other people are humans. No one will know for sure who is a vampire and who is a human, other than themselves. During each cycle, you have the choice to either mate with another person or not. It's not compulsory, but definitely advisable. What? However, you can't mate with the same person twice, even during different cycles. Where's the fun in that, right? Every time two humans mate, two children are born. When one human and one vampire mate, no children are born. But that human becomes a vampire for life, and for point's sake, a vampire child. If two vampires mate, nothing happens except a good time. Only the original vampire will know that they're a vampire. Humans who unknowingly mate with a vampire won't know until the end of the game. After each cycle, I will announce the total count, human babies produced, and new vampires created. After three cycles, the human and vampire children counts will be tallied. If there are more vampire children than humans, the human that created the fewest human babies will be executed. If more human babies exist, the starting vampire will be executed. Now, one versus six can seem lonely. So here's my offer to the soon-to-be vampire. This is very convoluted. The vampire can choose a Bonnie to their Clyde. This person will knowingly and willingly become a vampire in the first round and will win and lose alongside the vampire. If the vampire wins, so do they. And so they are spared from death. But if the vampire loses, so does that person, and we have a double execution. Be careful though, your Bonnie and Clyde dreams may be short-lived, and your partner might out you as the vampire. So, tell others at your own risk. I will notify you of your human or vampire status sometime before the game begins on Sunday morning. Ah, uh, this is my favorite game to date. Any questions? Sounds terrible. Need me to repeat? No. <laughs> Excellent. Dai suddenly zapped out of the room and the broadcast opened overhead. But we could hear Dai using her best customer service voice. We understand that you have a choice in Deletion Game Carrier and want to thank you all so much for choosing the Dai Deletion Game service. We murder for your satisfaction and we look forward to servicing you again this Sunday. I started making my way out of the dining hall when the captain called me aside. A word? I nodded as I moved aside, allowing everyone to leave the dining hall. I then approached the captain. 
Captain, how can I help? What was left on his bed? I could see the captain fighting back tears as her voice wavered. I was stumped by her question. His bed? Yoshiki's. What did he leave you? I don't know. I'd completely forgotten. I was so upset that he was gone that I'd forgotten his final words to me. I- You haven't looked? I could see the captain was quite upset. And she was right to be. Yoshiki deserved better than me for getting something like this. Why don't we check it together? I would like that. The captain smiled as she signaled for me to leave the room. We headed to Yoshiki's room in silence. The silence made the journey feel twice as long. Once we arrived, it was very obvious what he'd left me. An eye doll sat propped up jauntily on the bed. He taught you about this? Uh, yeah, but he told me not to tell the crew, and I haven't. The captain's eyebrows quivered almost imperceptibly in anger, and the room grew tense. Yoshiki, you are lucky you are already dead, or else I would have killed you myself. The captain suddenly started laughing. Captain? <laughs> Even in death, he's still finding ways to annoy me. I'm sorry, Captain. You need not be. This is exactly what I needed. Feeling this angry at Yoshiki makes me feel like he's still here with us. The captain let out a somewhat contented sigh. I guess that's one way to look at it. Would you like me to destroy the doll? Why would you destroy it? I thought maybe you'd be concerned about it and die. This is Yoshiki's lasting legacy. Sorry, yeah, of course. Alright. Take the doll to your quarters and keep it safe and secret from the others. Aye, aye, Captain. I checked the hallway before making my way back to the quarters with the eye doll stuffed awkwardly under my shirt, which, in hindsight, would probably raise even more questions. Despite my fears, the eye doll and I made our way back without any hiccups. I just couldn't get settled throughout the night. I kept looking at the clock, 1am, 2am, 3am, it was about 4am that I heard the knock at the door on my quarters. Are you awake? Well, if I was, I'm not anymore. With that being the case, I had best let myself in. My quarters door opened to reveal a very lively Nicholas. Looking at him, no one could tell that it was about 4am. I sat up as he made his way over to my bed. 4am, huh? What do I owe this pleasure? I wish this visit was out of self-interest. In truth, I came to ask you a favor. A favor at 4am? I'm Nicholas, I thought you'd never ask. I winked at Nicholas, to which he responded awkwardly and kind. I wine and dine my dates first, thank you very much. <laughs> I laughed as Nicholas continued. The captain is fretting over the black hole situation. As she should. Ah oh, yes, the black hole. So you are unable to console her? I am only a medical doctor and an amazing pianist. Thus, my attempts at comforting are a very little help in this matter. I couldn't help but chuckle at Nicholas's faux modesty. You, however, are a scientist, and because of that, your comforting words will carry more weight. So you want me to cheer the captain up in regards to a slow and inevitable death? Precisely. But do try to be as kind as possible. The captain, like you, was very close to Yoshiki. I stopped for a moment, recalling the last time I'd observed the captain. When I saw the captain during the new game explanation, she seemed completely fine, even more so than usual. She does that. She holds it together for everyone else. She always has. Okay, I'll be sure to be even more supportive than usual. Thank you. A silence fell over the room. Neither of us said a word for almost a minute. Well, you had best be getting dressed. Wait, you want me to talk to her now? No. I groaned as I pulled myself out of bed and put on enough of my uniform to satisfy the captain's keen eye for detail. Nicholas placed one of his hands on my shoulder. You are a good kid. Thank you? I shrugged Nicholas off as I would as I wound my way down the hallway and towards the bridge, still rubbing my eyes in an attempt to be 100% awake for the captain. Alright, I suppose we should wrap this one up here, and in the next one we will chat with the captain, see if we can make her feel happier, and find out if we're a vampire, I suppose. I don't know if it's Sunday, because it doesn't say what day it is, but, uh... We came across quite a few more of the audio glitches this time. Seen, uh, I basic die, lost her voice almost entirely for most of it. But, uh, I'm sure they'll get patched eventually. Till then, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.